Esports Talent Show. My name is Christopher Saunders, and I'm pleased to have on the head coach for St. Bernard, Grant Livingston. Coach, appreciate you coming up. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Excited. You know, first and foremost, just kind of, you know, just try to give like kind of a uh, a full circle, I guess, of kind of the season because there was, I know, a lot of highs, a lot of lows, but also, too, a very well-played season from St. Bernard. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, the kids did real well this year. We finished up our, our like, overall record was 20 and 5. Um, so it was a very good year record-wise. We got off to a really good start. Um, you know, we it, we started off, we won our 8 and 0, something like that, 7 and 0, 8 and 0. Um, and there was a lot of uh, good contribution from some younger guys that we needed. Um, we had a guy, a senior, Zion Frazier, transfer in. He had to sit 10 games. Um, and he's committed to Stony Brook. So he's a very, very good baseball player um, and had to kind of fill that gap until he came back. And a lot of younger guys stepped up um, and helped contribute big time to wins early on. Um, and, you know, we, we, we just had a lot of uh, just like kind of a little bit of a getting to know period in the beginning in terms of some of the defense and the lineup and, um, you know, just kind of working some things out. Um, and then, you know, we kind of, we, we hit a little bit of a, a question mark period. We had a, um, a pitcher go down with an injury um, and we just had to kind of figure some stuff out from a coaching standpoint, you know, at the, um, you know, with the pitch count limit and, you know, scheduling guys, you're looking two, three, di two, three games ahead. And, you know, we put them here, or this guy here, and then he can come back here and we got to hold him this many pitches here. So it's a, like a, you know, it looks like, I always say it's like one of those, uh, I don't know if, um, I might date myself, but you know, those things that used to be in the paper where you like hold it real close and then pull it away. And it's like, you know, the 3d thing, like that's trying to figure out high school pitching. That's what I equate it to, but um, you know, I had a lot to figure out um, with the pitching and scheduling it wise. And I think, you know, as a staff, we did a good job setting the guys up for success and then they, they performed um, put it, they, those guys put in a lot of work and practice um, to perfect their craft and really work on the things that they weren't good at early on in the season um, and that really translates some of the better teams that I've coached. That's been like the one consistent is when I have a team where the majority of the guys can identify and, and talk about and be okay with saying, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. I need to work on it. Let's work on it. That's, those are the better teams. Those teams go places. Those teams win a lot of games, go 20 and five, you know, and, and I had a lot of those guys this year. Um, so there's a lot of work put in, um, you know, and then we kind of, we've, we lost a few games at the end of the year there, but had a, had a lot of good competition, some good baseball, um, a lot of fun baseball, man. It was a fun season. Those kids are it, a lot of just, it was good to like kind of be a part of all that energy. There's all those, all every kid on my team is just, you know, very vocal and, and, you know, there's a lot of energy going on, whether it's practice or a game and, um, you know, we just, they just, we had a lot of fun. Now, again, I'm, I'm kind of dating myself because I'm trying to think as far as basketball. Now, they were in the ECC. Now, baseball, same thing, correct? ECC? Yep, ECC. Now, were you in Division One, Two, or Three? We were in – so there's four. We were in four. Oh, there's four. Okay. Yeah. So yep. you guys we were in four. four. Right? Yeah, it was, it was us, uh, Wheeler, Lyman, and Putnam. Okay. And I know that, um, obviously, again, for people who may not know, the ECC with so many teams and divisions and such – I know because I broadcast in the NBL, even though they just realigned uh, the basketball divisions and football, they only have two. But reason being, people may not have known that there are four divisions. And I know in talking with my guy from Killingly and Ben DeSonier, who's done a, a marvelous job with that program, taking them back to back quarterfinals. And I think the first time ever in the program to do that. Um, I've always told them the ECC. And I know, I know Killingly is called the quiet corner, but I feel like the ECC is like the quiet conference because not many people talk about it, but there's a whole lot of talent, but maybe because it's a little bit of a drive, there's really not a lot of attention. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, do, it does. And it's like, as I've talked to a few more people, I've expanded my, like, just, uh, I don't know, communication outside of this little corner. Like everything else is a drive for us, you know? So it's like, and especially from, I graduated in 2007 and I feel like the ECC was probably at like it's high at that point. You know, we had 
Fitch had Matt Harvey and Jesse Hahn. Um, you know, uh, Waterford was number one in the state at, at, at a certain point. A few times, you know, I think they went to three or four state championships in a row or something like that. We At St. Barnes, we won a state championship in 2007. Montmill was a great program at that point. Like, we had, there was a lot of, like, that was, I felt like the ECC was, was probably the better baseball uh, conference in the state. But I definitely um, – you know, as I see some of the stuff and, and, you know, some of the athletes come out of here, I feel like, and I, I feel like this is probably consistent everywhere. You know, there's going to be waves like that of talent. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it definitely is a little bit of a, a hidden corner. Ben has done a great job. Ben was killing was actually one of our losses, our, our last regular season game up, up at Killingly. Um, and it was a tough one, but I, I texted him after the game and I, I congratulated him. I, he had a, I think he only had two seniors this year and it was, I said, it sucks to take an L, but I'm, I'm glad your seniors got to go out on a high note. Um, cause he's done a great job up there, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, a, it's definitely, you know, a, a, a good, um, a good baseball producing conference. Um, I think this year was a very slow start for the ECC. Um, it felt like it was down big time, um, you know, and, and a downfall of the, of us playing in the, in division four was we weren't playing a lot of those division two and division one teams. We get a league generated schedule at the end of the, at the beginning of the year. And, and you play the teams in your division, your division twice and one division up, you play them once, um, everything else you got to schedule on your own which is great, but, um, you know, we don't get those, we, we weren't really playing those, uh, you know, the, the top teams as they were being talked about in, in the, the ECC, even though, you know, right up until I think the second to last game in the, in the year, we were the top in terms of just overall record top team in the ECC. Um, so that was a big, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a downfall, but there's definitely, there was good baseball everywhere. I mean, Lyman was in our, was in division, um, division four, um, you know, they beat us to go to the, the uh, you know, the semifinals. Um, we had a battle with them in the, the quarterfinals of our conference tournament, too, um, and battled them twice before that in the regular season. Um, Wheeler had a really good program this year. They had a, some good baseball players some good pitching. Um, they got to us once early on this year, early on, um, early on in the year. So there was some good baseball, you know, in Division Four, but not consistent. Um, and that was one that's that's one thing that um i don't know if that's consistent everywhere around the state but just not having that especially when you get to like tournament time if you're playing those you know you got one game a week or one game every two weeks where it's like all right this is going to be a good team this is going to be a battle this is going to be a fight and everything else is gonna you know you know you never look past anyone but it's like all right you know it's not we should take care of them it should be fine um it's tough to you know really carry that type of momentum and, and be able to handle you know certain adversity when you get to the state tournament no i you know i i think the biggest thing and i agree with you on that and i i do think that you know every conference has that right there's always going to be the top i don't know top eight nine i mean ccc has like 100 teams so it's kind of hard to really kind of go with that right but then you know there's going to be other teams with down years or just maybe not strong baseball programs and, you know, unlike Major League Baseball or, you know, college baseball, where it's kind of easier to travel and such, unless, you know, the CIAC, which I, I don't see ever doing, would ever kind of put, OK, the top teams only play the top and the teams at the bottom will play the teams at the bottom and then they'll readjust it every three years. You know, I, I don't see that being the case because obviously there's a lot with that and, you know, sticking to the conferences. But I do see your point, though, in the in the struggle of being like, OK, if we're playing three games this week, one team is solid. Other two are a little bit like, OK, a little bit of having a down year. I could see where that struggle is. And I think, you know, that kind of goes to my next question, coach, as far as with St. Bernard and kind of with the season that you had, at what point with some of those struggles, as far as kind of really figuring out like, OK, we played well against these teams of late, but how much can we take from that? Because obviously they're not to the same caliber of a line of Memorial, or let's say, you know, if you were able to play St. Paul, you know what I mean? Just try to match up with that. Cause I'm sure you were looking towards that in the class S uh, tournament. Yeah. Um, well, the answer is now uh, I, it's not announced yet, but I did make sure to talk to my AD and make sure I could, I could talk about it, but, uh, we're going to, we've made the jump from division four to division two. So next year we will be in division two for, uh, the ECC, which eliminates a lot of that. We'll be playing division two teams 
twice, and then every team in Division One once guaranteed those games. Um, so that was like that was something that you know I talked about four years ago when I sat down to interview. Like that's you know I, I, we needed to be in that top division. I think it was I think ECC was still at that point like M S M L something something like that. Um, but that's something like the bet you know Mark Jones the basketball team did the same thing you know climb the ladder moved up. Um, and you know, that, that's, it's one way to grow a program and to, you know, to be the best, you got to play the best. Um, and, and that's what we sh- we're striving to do. So that's, that, uh, was something that we made a request for this year. Um, and, uh, it went through, we'll be in division two next year to class M or is it just because of the boy enrollment that it probably just wouldn't happen? I mean, you can always request, you can always request to move up. Um, and hopefully that's something that we do. Hopefully that's something that we do soon. Um, you know, the, the goal of the, the program every year is to win a state championship and to have a, you know, a, a team that goes 20 and five or has a, you know, that type of, that type of season. Um, so I, you know, if, if, if we keep stacking these seasons, um, you know, we keep, you know, that the kids keep coming in, um, the talent keeps coming in then you know, I, that's, I, I'm not going to, I will not be shy. I'm trying to, I'm pulling the trigger to, to move up uh, a class. Um, I know if you talk to the, uh, the um, CT insider or whatever, what are the uh, uh, game time CT guys? I know they'll, they'll say that uh, Catholic schools don't need to be an S they should be up. Um, and I don't necessarily disagree. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think if, you know, if and when, and hopefully that if and when is soon, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make the move and hopefully it's just, you know, keep, keep moving up. Um, yeah. So as soon as we can, as soon as we can prove ourselves, um, I think we need to do that first, obviously, you know, there's no sense in moving up when it doesn't make sense, but you know, as we, as we can prove ourselves and it makes sense, then, you know, we'll definitely end up making the request and trying to move up. Well, I can tell you the uh, discussions of, as far as having the private schools, the parochial schools above a class, it, it's a hotly tested debate for football same thing for, I mean, basketball, it's it's at a whole new level. And it's because obviously Sacred Heart, which is now closed, East Catholic, Northwest Catholic, so on and so forth. But yeah. that's a discussion for another day that could go on for 10 hours plus. Yep, yep. You know, but anywho, you know, it's it's awesome to hear that you guys are moving up to Division Two. That's really cool. And, you know, like you said, it sounds like you really want to, and no disrespect to the teams as far as below, but you want to be able to go up against the strong teams because you have a vision of where this team could potentially be for not just the following season next year, but for seasons to come. And you want to be as prepared as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I mean, that was kind of, you know, when you, when, when we, uh, when we lost in the, the quarterfinals, you know, that talk with the guys is always the hardest at the end of the season. Right. Um, and you know, that was the one thing that was kind of my messaging to the seniors. Like this is, you guys helped build a program. Those kids were, I think all, but all, but one um, were there right from the beginning, which was three years, the year after COVID, the year after the COVID year, their freshman year was the COVID year. Um, and, you know, they, they turned some heads that year, their sophomore year, we had a lot of young guys um, and they perform really well and they just, they didn't regress anywhere. They all got better. Um, and it showed and they helped build a program. I mean, we're going to have expectations now, you know, going into next year and hopefully years after that, you know, we have a, a program to a certain caliber. We have a baseball team that can compete to a certain caliber. And, and you know, that was, it, it's all because of those guys, you know, we tell them all the time as coaches, we can't, you know, we're not, my wife says it to me all the time. I, I get back from when she's like, great game. I'm like, I kind of just, you know, coach third and sat in a bucket, but yeah, the kids did a great job. Um, you know, it's all them. They, you know, they're, if you don't get that buy-in and they're not committed and you don't have those kids, you know, the kids that, that want to work and want to grow themselves as baseball programs and are just team oriented, team centered guys, then, you know, it's not really, you're going to be stuck in quicksand. Thankfully, um, you know, I, I haven't had any of those guys and it's, it's been guys that want to work to help get themselves better, help win games and, and leave something behind when they leave. Um, and they all did that. You know, they, they definitely all did that this year. Now, you've been a part of the program now for three seasons. Next year will be your fourth. Um, just kind of, if you can, you know, again, it's, if you know, if I ask you, hey, reflect on your years. Well, three years is a lot easier to reflect on than 20, 30, 40. And you're like, well, okay, back in the 1960s, 70s, you know, you can kind of go back a little bit. But looking at these three years, do you feel like as yourself as a coach, 
and you can be honest here. Do you feel like that you've become a better coach as far as from three years ago till now? I definitely, I, 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 I don't, I, as much as I don't think that's a question for me, I, I, I think I'd love to, I feel like that's like a more of a, my peers question. Um, but I, 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 I definitely think so. Um, you know, there's a lot of, I came from coaching, I coached Legion baseball before high school. So I coached Niantic Legion for six years before um, taking the job with St. Bernard's and Legion's a whole different animal, um, you know, right off just like number one, it's wood bats. I think they've actually changed now. It's, it's metal bats now, but, um, and when I was coaching, there was a lot of teams in our zone. We were playing almost double the games when it got into postseason. It was definitely double, if not more than in the, uh, high school regular season in, in, I think two or three less weeks worth of a time span. Um, so it was a whole nother, you know, a whole nother animal. Um, so there was definitely a learning curve starting off, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, where the, where the kids are, you know, I would get them after they played a full season of high school and their bodies are conditioned to a certain point, right. They've seen it taken, you know, 70, 80 at bats at that point, they've pitched, you know, they've gotten eight starts or whatever it is. Um, and arms are conditioned. So in terms of getting the kids ready, um, you know, for game one, for game five, for game 10, you know, for game 15, you know, that was a, definitely a big learning curve in terms of, um, practice structure and, and how to do that. And I definitely leaned on some of my peers, um, you know, for some advice on how to handle some of that stuff. And, you know, it, it's turned out well, there's definitely, I, I can't say I've had, I haven't hit copy and paste on a, on a practice schedule year, year to year. So it, it's, it has been changing and adapting. Um, a lot of it's kid specific too. Um, and the biggest shift I've seen now is just, um, you know, being, a part of the program for, you know, obviously more than a year, kids know what to expect coming in, you know, when they walk in the door, there, there's certain expectations for practice for games. Um, and they know, you know, they know what myself and the coaches expect of them. Um, and, and they know the level that we're going to hold them to and what they need to do. So um, there's a little bit of like, is, there's some play there and, and, you know, clear communicated expectations that, you know, everybody's on board with that helps, but I would, I would definitely say, yes, I, I feel like I've, I've grown and gotten better as a coach. Um, and it's, uh, you know, a lot of that too is experience, you know, when you're, I feel like one of the hardest things is like on a, a ball in the gap, you know, and you got to run around second base and, you know, just send them or not, you know, you can watch a little bit, you know, we're not, it's not a college program or a prep program, you know, the scouting reports aren't anything crazy. You're seeing a kid throw two balls to home before the game in IO um, you know, so there's things like that where, you know, you just need to see it a bunch. Um, but I've always trusted my baseball instinct. So it's not, you know, that, that's, that's not something that, that kind of keeps me up at night, but there's, you know, there's different situations and things seeing, you know, a lot of different high school, different, different types of situations, game situations. Um, and even more so like just those off day situations and, and how to handle those, um, what to do when you have, you know, three days of practice in between games as opposed to two days or one day and, you know, you know, what you're doing with the kids based off what they need to work on, what they are, you know, what they don't think they need to work on, but what they really do need to work on. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of intricacies that, you know, I, I don't think, um, you know, I, I think that's probably consistent in every sport, but not too many people fully understand or appreciate how much the actual coach, because no high school coach is doing it for the money. You know, how much, how much thought and time we put into, you know, trying to make the kids as best as we can make them. Coach, it's been awesome being able to have you on the podcast. I really do appreciate it. You know, before I let you go, if you can, in maybe a minute or two, because I know we're running out of time here, because you mentioned the Legion side about how many games and ma mainly how Legion has changed. I mean, when I played for Waterbury, it used to be Waterbury, Oxford, because Oxford would combine with Seymour and have them. It would be Naugatuck. I remember Danbury, New Milford. I could go on and on. Yeah. Um, you know, Oakville, which was a perennial team, strong team in Legion. Now they've all disbanded, or most of them have, and now they've joined different uh, zones and such. Can you explain to me if you can? Because I, again, I'm not in the Legion circuit as much as I was, obviously, when I coached for Naugatuck and when I played. Explain to me if you can, what has happened with Legion ball? Uh, uh, I mean, there's a lot that's happened. I mean, just it's you know, AAU baseball. 
that's just to be as blunt as as I possibly can. That's that's what's kind of caused a lot of it. There's so many options for kids now. You know, they can play on. You know, there's probably uh, I don't know in the town I live in. There's probably six or seven different AAU programs with you know 14U to you know whatever 18U whatever U they do. Um, so there's you know the AAU program made it extremely challenging for Legion baseball, um, you know, to continue on. And then that COVID year definitely didn't help at all. Um, and it, we got the same thing around here. There's a lot of I, I think they're down to like four Legion teams now. Um, I think there was like eight or nine at one point. So it's definitely gone down. It's a shame because Legion baseball was like the, you know, it was like the, the all-star team of like, you know, your town or two, if you were lucky enough to pull from two towns. Um, and that was, you know, and you got those kids back, they can, you know, freshmen in college, they come back and play and, you know, you got that one more year. Um, so that was, I mean, it, I, I love Legion baseball. I'm a Legion guy. I think I, you know, I always will be. Um, and then really not to take anything away from AAU because I'm, sure there's some good programs out there a lot of my kids play AAU baseball um, and they play on good teams with a lot of good players um, but you know it's, it's it's there's just something about you know I don't know look at you get that schedule you know and it's like every game but one out of the 30 is 705 under the lights and you know you're playing with a wood bat and you're out there just you know all the kids are getting off work you're getting off work whatever it is and they're you're just showing up because everyone loves baseball they love playing and you know they're, they're the best of the best in the town you know for their age so that's I, to me, nothing's better than that. Um, and I'm sure I got it. This has got to be true. It's definitely cheaper than AAU. <laughs> so I, but you know, I don't know. I'll always be on that side of the fence with the, the Legion baseball argument. Coach, I really appreciate you coming on a lot of fun being able to talk with you. Hopefully I can get you back on maybe sometime before next season. Now that we've connected and uh, stay in touch coach. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Always, I'll wrap things up here in the CT Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. And our CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm Marjorie. Find them all. Enjoy their day, everybody, and be well.